Red days like these always tend to make us a little more fearful than necessary. So before we give into the fat, let's look at what has been really happening in the market today. What's up? My name is Caroline and this is Wealth in Progress where you'll learn how to make passive income with cryptocurrencies. In this video, we'll look at what caused the 10% correction in the market today. We'll do a comparison with past bull runs and I'll tell you what I'm doing, what I'm currently doing. Now, as always, none of this is financial advice and we never know with 100% certainty in which direction it will go next. So just take this as information and as education, but don't take it as financial advice. All right, let's dive in. All right, so let's look at the first article. So, so this article titles Bitcoin price sinks 10% as market braces for a macro storm ahead. Now the article first talks about how about the recent dips that Bitcoin had, about the major correction in May, and now the interesting part comes in the second section. So this part is titled Dow Jones dips as dangerous ma macro storm brews. Bitcoin price has already recovered more than a thousand percent since the bell rang at the official Monday morning market open. The first false sell-off started overnight after the weekly close, potentially due to, to stock market weakness. The macro environment is on shaky ground considering a potential catastrophic default of China's second largest real estate developer, Evergrande. The default has Lemon Brothers type implications, enough to cause domino effect and potential economic collapse and recession. The Dow Jones fell 1.87% during the same 24 hour period, that's quite a lot in the stock market, as Bitcoin's 10% collapse. But given cryptocurrency's notorious volatility, to the two situations are of similar magnitude. Normally stable metals have also suffered furthering the extended macro madness. So what apparently happened is one that one of China's biggest real estate companies has been unable to pay their debts. Now the article now talks about one scenario that could happen after this news. So it says the Evergrande situation could ultimately turn into another scenario where an unprecedented amount of fiat currency is essentially printed to cover the debts of the real estate giants can't, that the real estate giants can't cover. Now they then say that these bailouts have been, have saved the stock markets and the economy back then in 2008 and this strategy has been used again to combat COVID. So now the question is, can the economy bear that again? And we'll have to see if that even happens, but that's, an, that's one way to basically um, save the market from a total crash. Now, what's interesting is that we have no idea how the cryptocurrency market will react to this macro market situation. Because what's happened so far is that since 2008, the stock market, such uh, as well as the real estate and also precious metal market, markets have been on a surge, basically. There hasn't been any major crash. And so we don't know how crypto will react to that. There are basically two possible scenarios. One is that once the stock market crashes, everything else will crash as well, including cryptos. The other possible scenario is that this will result in a pump, in a major pump in the crypto market, and probably especially Bitcoin first of all, and then it will flow into all coins. Now, the next article displays the current sentiment very well, and that is one of indecisiveness and one of anxiousness, basically. So we don't know in which direction the market will go next, and most investors, being retail or whales, seem to be unsure about it. This article displays that very well. So it tells Bitcoin extends slide below 40K, 43K as Binance's BTC stash grows to May crash levels. And you can see the subtitle here says Bitcoin has been leaving Coinbase's wallets in 2021 while BTC exchange reserves on Binance tell a different story. Now, what usually happens is that when BTC goes out of exchanges, it means that whales want to hold or any BTC holders basically want to hold their coins. They don't want to sell or short it. Once you have an inflow into exchanges, that means that people want to sell their BTC. So the first is rather bullish. The second is rather bearish. Now in here, we have both scenarios. So we have a scenario where, where BTC is leaving one exchange's wallet, so Coinbase, but it is going on to other exchanges wallets and so that is Binance. So let's look at what that, what that means. So it says here, despite Bitcoin dropping below 43k mark on Monday, the outflow of BTC from exchanges has continued in a multi-month multi trend, particularly on Coinbase Pro. So the uh, Coinbase's Pro vault vaults dropped by about 28 million, about 28,000 BTC 
Similarly, other crypto exchanges including Kraken, OKX, Bitfinex, and Huobi also experienced a drop in their Bitcoin holdings, with withdrawn amounts totaling thir about around 30,000 BTC across the board. So that's one upside of the coin. Now let's look at the other part, and that's about Binance. So it says here, however, data also data also shows that the Bitcoin balance on Binance wallets has risen to 29,000 BTC in the last 30 days, which is more than the amount of than the amount Coinbase brought with withdrew from its vaults. So what you can see is that there is really a in, an indecisiveness. On the one hand, there's outflows registered on man, many more exchanges than there are inflows. So you have, we have inflows on Binance and then on a bunch of exchanges we have outflows. However, however, Binance is much bigger than those other exchanges and it's probably also one of the main ones where shorts are placed. So you can see it's really, you know, we have both sides of the coins present here. Now we have a, a bunch of information now that could have led to this drop. What I think is very important though is to keep the big picture in mind. For one, we don't know if there will be a stock or real estate market crash coming and if when that will be. Next, we don't know if the cryptocurrency markets will react the same way or whether it might result in a pump. So now instead of freaking out over the smaller events, over those news that have just come up, you always need to keep in mind that mostly what people who react to news are mostly retail investors and retail investors are not the ones who move the markets. Whales and, and institutions and big investors are the ones who do and they usually react in the exact opposite way of what retail investors do. So now let's take a step back and stop freaking out over this information, over this news and let's look at the bigger picture. So I found a very interesting tweet that I would like to share with you by TechDev and he has made a very good point of, of the big picture of looking at what has been going on in those, in those cycles, in those bull markets of the past couple of years. So let's look at that now. You can see those three images and the, the two on the left display the two recent uh, bull markets, one in 2013 and one in 2017. And now the last picture shows the current bull market that we're in. And you can see in each of them there was a pretty deep dip or pretty steep correction in July. Uh, one, well, the one in 2017 was a bit bigger than now. And then you can see after that there has been an accumulation phase where it's been going up and down basically. Now, you can also see there's been another pretty good correction in 2017 that was in August. In 2013 it was also in September. So now we're in September and the exact same thing seems to happen. Plus, he also shows the RSI, and he also shows every time there's been an RSI downtrend, then there's been a downtrend break each time, then we had a consolidation phase where we're in right now, and then there's the markup, and in the next picture he shows very well what this looks like again. So what we didn't have in this bull market yet is the blow off top. So that's where it goes absolutely parabolic within two weeks maybe and then it really corrects very hard and that's usually when the bear market starts. So we didn't see that yet and what you can see again 2013, 17 and 21. You can see each time we had this reaccumulation phase that lasted uh, during the summer basically so between July and, and September or October roughly and then we've had that, that correction that we're in right now and then we had the real hard the really hard move up to the blow off top. So where are we in right now? We're here. So you can see there's a correction incoming. Might go a bit lower, we don't know that yet. And after that, the real upwards movement is going is most likely going to start. Now, we don't know with certainty whether that's gonna happen, but what you can see is that history usually repeats itself. So if we just assume that history repeats itself and we have another bull market just like the two previous ones, then we might go a bit lower, but then we're really gonna take off. So that brings me to my last article that I wanted to share with you. And that's this one that titles, why it is ideal to accumulate Bitcoin, Ethereum and Cardano right now. So he mainly talks about how to accumulate in the bear market, but if we scroll down, there's another interesting section. So it says, according to CryptoQuant analysis, it is the perfect time to load BTC when people are in disbelief. It is popularly called the, the 
the deep strategy, something that the Salvadorian president had also adopted during the price dip in early September. So he loaded up on more Bitcoin in early September and again now, most of us wait for the bottom to buy and the top to sell. In reality, that is an impossible task. Staying invested in the markets has always been more rewarding than timing the market. And I couldn't agree more. While it is definitely possible to time close to the top and close to the bottom, you won't get the exact perfect perfect price. You won't get the exact bottom and the exact top. So what's much better to do is to DCI in, dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. And that's exactly what those kinds of dips are amazing and great for. These are the opportunities where you can DCI in so you can set price levels or, or buy levels at different targets, buy back in and then sell when it's going up again. Now, speaking of price, there has only been uh, uh, very few tokens in my portfolio that have been in the green today. One of them has been ADAX. <laughs> Let's look at that now quickly. I am not sure where that happened, to be honest, but that pumped up to 240 and has corrected now, but it's still very nicely in the green, 18% in the green. I've checked their Twitter, but I haven't found what actually ha what's actually caused that pump, but that was one of the very few coins that was in the green today. Another coin in my portfolio that has been in the green today is one of the gems that we've, that we've shared in the DeFi community. Now, if you'd like to join us there and to also get access to the gems that we share with our community and also the potential airdrop opportunities, we'll share all of that in there. If you'd like to join us, be sure to subscribe to my, to my newsletter to get all the information about, about how you can join us as well. Plus, you'll also get access to Kieran and my portfolio. You'll see all of our trades and this way you'll also see what I'm doing in these kind of markets and what one of the the trades that I've done recently is that I sold Cardano at, um, at a higher price and I bought back in now during the dip. Now we've had a signal that has alerted us that there will probably be a dip coming for Cardano so we could nicely trade that and if you'd like to get information like that as well go down in the description subscri subscribe to our newsletter and join the deeper academy today. If you like this video, hit the like button down below, share with your friends and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.